Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be kind of rounding out my 2022 favorites by letting you know my curated picks. So initially, I asked if you guys wanted to see a top five curated picks of the best of 2022. I know that favorites videos throughout the year can be pretty overwhelming because a lot of creators talk about just so many products. And realistically, you're not going to go and purchase 30 products from the year 2022. And a lot of the time, the products that people mention in their favorites video throughout the year, they end up changing pretty fast um, with the upcoming year. People will just have new favorites because new makeup is coming out. And I think a lot of content creators like to keep their content fresh. So they almost feel like they need to talk about new favorites. And on my channel, I don't mind if I repeat my favorites because I want you guys to pick up the best of the best makeup. I don't want you to waste your money, uh, especially on luxury beauty. I want you to have the best of the best makeup and really utilize your collection instead of just having an overwhelming amount of makeup. So I thought I'd keep this list very curated and select the best makeup from the year of 2022 that I know that I will be reaching for in 2023 and these will remain favorites throughout the next few years. Now, I decided to, I really tried to keep it out of top five, but I couldn't. I just have way too many kind of new holy grail favorites. So I felt like, you know what, I am going to mention more than five. And this way you can pick a few products if you are interested in picking any of these up. These are products that are innovative, they are game changers, they are holy grails in my collection, and they are things that I would definitely recommend investing in because you are going to pick them up and utilize them throughout the next few years. You are going to get use out of these products. That's how strongly I feel about them. But let's stop blabbering and let's just get into the video. I did decide not to mention foundations in this video because I did talk about my best and worst foundations in a previous video and foundations can just be tricky to 100% recommend because people have different preferences, different skin types. So I'm just going to link down below my best and worst foundation video if you are looking to pick up a foundation specifically. But I have a lot of other complexion products to mention. I am going to start off with the skin and I think that primers are essential, especially as I get older. I used to think that priming was kind of an optional step especially when I was in my early 20s. But now as I get older and I really want that less is more look because as we age, we want the least amount of makeup on our face as possible. And I think a primer really helps you achieve that less is more look where you don't need to um, put on as much foundation or concealer. And again, that's really important, especially when you're in person with people when you're face to face with people, when you're you want your complexion to look natural. At least I do. I don't want it to look like I have makeup sitting on my skin. I want my skin to look good. I always think the best compliment is when people say your skin looks really nice versus the makeup you are wearing is really nice. So going on to, these are skincare makeup hybrids, which I absolutely adore. The first must have from 2022, a product that you won't regret buying. This is the Chantecaille Sheer Glow Rose Face Tint. I absolutely love this as a priming product. So you can use this all over your face as a primer. I really like it underneath my eyes specifically. I'll kind of apply the most product there and then I'll apply some product to like my cheekbones, my forehead, the center of my chin. I really like to apply the product here where my lap lines are because it really smooths out that area. So what this product does as if you can see, it has kind of a rosy tint to it, which I did not think I would enjoy initially because I am someone who is on the fair side and my skin has the tendency when I am applying my skincare or when I'm just touching my face, it has the tendency to go a little pink just because, I don't know, I have sensitive skin. And I was a little scared off initially about applying a pink tinted, product as a primer because I don't want my skin to look more pink but what this does it is such a sheer sheer pink tint that you almost can't even notice it it's very ethereal and it does add a brightness to the skin without making my skin look more red and worse and more sensitive and this also has it's a really nice texture it has a nice creamy consistency but it has almost a gel like consistency so if you have oilier skin I still think that this priming product would work for you because it does 
really melt into the skin. It kind of adheres to the skin. And because it's that more gel consistency, it's not going to feel heavy on the skin or too thick on the skin. It does have that kind of dry down effect. But I really like this because it acts as a really great priming base because of that brightening property. It adds brightness to the skin. It also has this great quality about it where it blurs the skin. It really adds this soft focus effect. So you want to add that blurred effect before you go in with foundation because if you have already that soft focus blurred effect on your skin before you go in with pigmented products like a foundation or a concealer, you actually won't require as much product because you your skin already looks a little bit more blurred out in especially under the eyes allows me to use less concealer as well. And next on the list, Chantika has just been killing it with the curated releases. They don't release an excessive amount of product. Usually they're very thoughtful in what they release. And I have loved quite a few of their releases this year. And um, I just want to mention, I did purchase all of these myself. I was not sent any of the Chantikai product. And the next product is the Chantikai Anti-Aging Face Tint. I would say the consistency between the Chantikai Sheer Glow Rose Face Tint and the consistency of the Chantikai Anti-Aging Face Tint is very similar. They both have that gel consistency. It's very lightweight on the skin. It almost feels like a bit of a jelly product. Like it kind of is a little jello-like almost. Not quite like jello. It's more jelly consistency but it is a very nice texture and it is exactly what it is. It is a sheer tint. So when you look at this jar, it looks a little scary. It looks a little too pigmented, but it's not. It's very, very sheer and very buildable. So when you apply it onto the skin, oh, again, I really like the consistency. It feels almost like a serum and this is a skincare makeup hybrid again, but it blends into the skin so beautifully. It has a really nice tint to it. So in the summertime, I can actually get away with using this as basically a tinted moisturizer. So I just apply it all over the skin. And then if I do require any concealing in any, under, any other areas, I'll go in with my concealer over top, like under the eyes. If I have any little discoloration spots, then I can go in with a concealer as well. But I don't know if you can tell, but my hand, where I've just applied that product, it looks just really perfected. It gives, again, that really blurred soft focus effect it does have a filtered quality to it. So when you apply it onto the skin, it really just smooths over texture and pores and makes that area look completely blurred out and just so smooth and really soft focus. It's such an impressive product when you just apply it onto the skin as is. So like I said, in the summertime, even I can do it in the winter time, it's just maybe like a touch too deep for me. But apply this all over the skin, just wear it as a tinted moisturizer on its own, and it's so beautiful. Another thing you can do with this product is if you have a foundation that's a little bit too light for you, and I'm someone, I'd rather purchase a foundation that's a touch bit too light for me versus too deep, because usually we go in with bronzers and stuff like that, and you could use a little bit of this mixed in with your foundation. Even if you just want a healthy glow to your foundation one day, just mix a little bit of this in with your foundation. It will help sheer out that foundation a little bit and it will just give you a little bit of a bronze tint. You could also mix a little bit of this Chantikai Sheer Glow Rose Face Tint in with your foundation as well if you want to lighten up a foundation a little bit. This is just such a beautiful product and it also works well as a cream bronzer. So another favorite way, especially now that it's winter and I'm not as tanned, I like to go in with this as my cream bronzer. Now this is more like a cream hybrid liquid bronzer, but it is so beautiful as a bronzer because it is so sheer. And I really like that for a more cream liquid bronzer because a lot of the time with cream bronzers, I note that they are finicky to use, especially if you are a beginner, I do not recommend cream products because they can just be a little harder to blend onto the skin. You might not think that they are, but when you get into the sunlight, you can really detect if someone has worn is wearing a cream bronzer because you can see some patchiness. It's not blended all the way. It might be too pigmented in areas. It can just be a little harder to blend if you are new to makeup or a beginner. But this is something that I would absolutely recommend to beginners because it is so skin-like and so sheer. It blends like an absolute dream as a cream bronzer. My favorite brush to use with that bronzer is the Merit. I think it's called the number one brush. I will link it down below, but these two are a perfect pairing. And once you apply this bronzer onto the skin, you just apply it in any areas that you want. It is 
so insanely easy to blend. It almost just blends itself and it is so sheer and so subtle on the skin that it won't give you any lines of demarcation. You won't have any harsh lines or anything like that. And it's just so good at that pore blurring effect, which I absolutely love. So this is fantastic if you're looking for a cream or liquid bronzer or if you're just looking for a really subtle skin tint. Let's talk about Chanel for a minute. So this is a new concealer on the market. This is called the Chanel Sublimage Le Corrector U. It's a radiance generated concealing eye care. Again, this is a skincare makeup hybrid. I seem to just really, really love them. Um, but yeah, this is a fantastic, fantastic concealer. I would say it's almost a concealer and corrector in one. It does have a slight correcting effect, but it's not too peachy tone where you need to go in with like a concealer to counteract that corrector over top. It's a very subtle peachiness that it has. This has just worked wonders on my under eyes. It has a really nice texture. It is a little bit on the thicker side, so this is definitely more on the medium to full coverage. Definitely buildable to a fuller coverage, and this is a very buildable concealer. So you can get away with a really thin layer and it looks really beautiful, but if you require a little bit more coverage, you can build it up and it won't look heavy under the eyes. It has a really nice finish to it because it's not too dewy and it's also not too matte. It doesn't look radiant on the under eyes, which I like because I would prefer a concealer to be more on the matte side versus the dewy side, just because I don't want anything um, like highlighty on my under eyes. I don't want anything with like shimmer particles or that reflects the light too much because that can have the reverse effect where it actually makes your under eyes circles look worse. I just think the finish of this is beautiful. It's a really nice kind of serum consistency where it doesn't settle into any lines. Of course, it is your under eye area, so concealer might have the tendency to move, but if you set this down with a little bit of powder, you are good to go for the full day. It holds up really well. It wears for a really long time on the under eyes as well. I just think this is a fantastic co corrector concealer. And the one, the one thing I don't like is the packaging because it is in this jar packaging. Not ideal. It can be a little messy. It can be a little more time consuming to apply because I do require to apply this with a brush and then I have to blend it out that way. I don't mind spending the extra time to use this concealer because of how flawless and beautiful my under eyes look. Next on my list is a blush release that really impressed me. I'm someone that's really picky with blushes. When you guys see my blush declutter, you will probably be surprised that I'm basically keeping no blushes, just because I feel like I can do better in the blush department. There's just blushes where I'm like, that's a really good blush, but there's not blushes that wow me. This was a blush that wowed me. I absolutely love these new Gucci Blush de Beauté, the Cheeks and Eye Powder. They're a luminous matte powder blush. And I have the shade Bright Coral, and I also just picked up the shade Rosy Beige, so I now have two of these. Absolutely love the formula. I think the packaging is very cute as well, but the most important thing is what is inside. And the quality of these blushes is just superb. These are a very... They have a very creamy quality to them. So even though these are a powder blush, they have this creamy effect on the skin where they almost just meld and melt into the skin, especially if you wait like 10 minutes after you've applied them. They really become second skin-like, which I really appreciate in a powder formula because I don't want my makeup to, I don't want you to see makeup sitting on my skin. I want the makeup to almost meld into my skin so it becomes one. So it looks very natural, especially like I said in person, that's just very important to me. I don't want it to look like I'm wearing blush. I want the blush to like come from within. And this is what these blushes do. Now they are called a luminous matte blush. I would not say they're luminous. These lean more on the matte side. They almost have this very soft satin effect to them, but I would say the satin effect almost just comes from how creamy the formula of these blushes are. Absolutely beautiful. I like to use the Bright Coral when maybe my skin's looking a little drab, where I need a little life back into my skin. If I want that more like youthful effect, I really love this color because it's bright, but it's not obnoxious, it's not over the top, it's not an unnatural un un bright blush. And then this rosy beige is really beautiful. I wish it was more of a bronzy tone. It's still really beautiful. I think it gives the perfect kind of, I'm wearing it today, but it gives the kind of perfect nude, really neutral shade where it just looks like you're blushing from within. It goes with any eye look, any lip color. It's just a very neutral, universally flattering sort of blush shade. 
that will just pair well with anything that you're wearing, which I absolutely love. This formula just really, really impressed me, how it looks on the skin. It does have that quality because it's really important for me to my for my skin to look really smooth, soft focus, blurred, and this has that effect. And I really, really, really just am so happy with this formula. It blends easy. It's not too pigmented where you have to use like special brushes to apply it. It's just a great powder formula. It's like a typical powder formula, but it's not so typical because it's special and it just looks really beautiful on the skin. And I'm sure you saw this coming if you have seen my previous videos because I can't rave about this powder enough. I actually bought a backup and I purchased both of these powders. Again, I was not sent any of them. This is the Chantecai Lotus Perfect Blur Glow Powder. This is just so special and so superb and it stands out in my makeup collection because I don't have anything like it. If I were to um, kind of say some comparisons, I would say that this finishing powder is similar to like the Guerlain Meteorites or the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powders, but they're not similar because this is so much better. This is so, so, so much better. The problem that I have with the Hourglass Powders is I think they actually look heavy on the skin, especially when you're out in daylight. You can see them sitting on top of the skin. They just have a bit of a thicker consistency to them and you can see detectable shimmer particles. This glow powder, you cannot detect any shimmer particles in it. It is such a finely milled powder. It is a baked powder. It has this ever so soft sheen to it that just enhances the complexion. It adds this brightness to the complexion, but when you blend it into the skin, it does add that blurred effect, but it also adds a glow to the skin, which is so rare because usually when we add glow to the skin, it can actually emphasize texture on the skin. It can emphasize pores. But this doesn't. This just goes over the skin and it blurs out the skin. Again, adds that soft focus effect. I'm just going to repeat those words over and over when you hear me review these things. It adds that blurring capability, but it adds a glow to the skin, which I think looks really beautiful because your skin's not completely matte. So we have a lot of matte powders on the market that are blurring, which are beautiful, but your skin's not completely matte all over, especially when we're talking about your natural skin. Your natural skin has a bit of a glow to it. So it's really nice to finish off your makeup, especially on the exterior of your skin, by just finishing off your makeup, blending this all over the skin to add that glow back to your skin. But you get that glow, but also that perfected airbrushed, blurred effect to your skin, which I absolutely adore. This is also, you could go in with like a more precise brush, if I have one here, a more precise dense brush. And you can use this as your highlighter in specific areas, like on the top of your cheekbones. And it's just going to, again, add this really beautiful effect where it brightens your skin, it adds that brightness back to your skin, but you won't emphasize texture on your skin. So this would be fantastic if you have more mature skin to actually use this as your highlighter with a more precise brush. But then at the end of my makeup, I like to just finish everything off by buffing this over the skin. It softens all the edges of your makeup so there's no harsh lines. Again, it doesn't look like makeup sitting on top of your skin. It just allows for everything to be blended into the skin with no harsh lines. It actually looks more natural when you buff this powder at the end of your makeup. And my final must have product from the year of 2022 is this Tom Ford Eye Color Quad Creme in the shade number 36, Tiger Eye. Again, I did pick up all the quads. This one is my absolute favorite because it is a neutral quad. It leans a little bit warm, but it's not too warm where it's orangey or anything like that. The one shade I probably don't get the most use out of is this kind of peachy coral shade here, but I get so much use out of the other colors that it is fine. Absolutely adore this matte shade here. It is such a beautiful matte formula. Love it. And these satin shades here, my favorite thing is to mix them together actually and just apply them onto my lid. I also like to use this in the crease and then this on the lid. I just adore all the looks that I could come up with with this eyeshadow look. I also like to use this in combination with some of my one and done shades because these are such a satin shimmer. There are no detectable shimmer particles. It's a very smooth shimmer. Again, it's more of a satin finish, I would say, because there's no detectable shimmer particles, nothing glittery about them at all. Sometimes I like to layer a one and done eyeshadow over top, especially if I'm going out, I'll use like the Bobbi Brown or the Chantecai Luminescent Eyeshades to add a kind of an eyeshadow topper off just for a more evening look if I want to look a little more glam. But I just adore this palette. These are really creamy eyeshadows. 
but they're not too creamy where they actually feel like a cream shadow. They're incredibly easy to blend. They're pigmented, but nothing too pigmented. They're buildable. I definitely would suggest this to beginners because the consistency and the quality of these are just so easy to work with. They're very buildable. They're blendable. So I feel like beginners would really be able to use this palette with ease. A lot of you have actually asked me, or a few of you has, have asked me if these have hard pans. No. I think they look like they have hard pan, but it's just because the shadows are really creamy that it almost looks like they have, I don't know if this makes sense, it almost looks like they have hard pan because they're such a creamy powder eyeshadow, but it's just the formula of them. It's not actually hard pan. They're very silky. They're very creamy. I've had no issues. I think it's just the appearance of the eyeshadow. I've used this throughout the year consistently consistently. It's something that I use at least once a week in my collection. I just love the looks I get out of this. This is something my mom also picked up. So if you have mature skin or mature eyes, I can confirm that this works really well on mature eyes as well because my mom has used this palette a lot and loves it as well. Just such a fantastic bag for me. And this has replaced um, my favorites from like the Tom Ford wet to dry formula. This is now my number one Tom Ford palette. This is kind of the only palette that I have used throughout the year consistently. Some of you might feel like you're missing a transition shade in this palette, but I just use my bronzer as a transition shade and then I can just go in and either use this on the outer corner or just on the lash line. For me, I just like using a bronzer as a transition shade anyways because it just adds more cohesion to the look uh, and it looks a little more natural when you can incorporate your bronzer into your eye look as well. So I just like to do that if you are someone that really likes having a transition shade, but absolutely love this palette, highly recommend it. But that is it for my top curated picks, the products that you won't regret buying from 2022. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please let me know if you have any holy grail products that you tried in 2022 that you just can't imagine doing your makeup without. I would love to know. I would love to hear from you. And also, I'm really excited because I have some really fun video ideas coming up. I'm definitely getting away from just reviewing makeup. And when I created my channel, I really wanted it for women to feel more confident, to really enhance your natural beauty, to have that really curated collection. Um, and yeah, I just want all of you to feel really confident when you use your makeup. But I don't want you to feel overwhelmed by makeup. So I'm definitely going to do more... I want to say tutorials, but more fun videos where it's not just review based. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Like this video if you like it, and I'll see you in my next video.